After a public investigation that reveals during the previous 70 years, some 200,000 children, young people and vulnerable adults had been abused in state and church care. New Zealand Prime Minister Christopher Luxon issued an apology and pledged improvements. Here's a report. Uh, he was a popular um, and well-known teacher, but he was also a pedophile. Um, unfortunately, there were other little girls that he also abused in care. Moapulu Francis Tangaloa was repeatedly abused from the age of five to seven by a Catholic brother. And a landmark New Zealand report shows she is not alone. It revealed that around 200,000 children and vulnerable adults were abused while in state and church care over the last 70 years. That's nearly one in three of those who passed through the system. I'm gonna make it shine. On Wednesday, people who suffered this abuse marched to Parliament ahead of the report being addressed, branding this a historic moment. The findings follow a national investigation into the experiences of over 2,300 survivors of abuse between 1950 and 2019. Survivors were subjected to abuse, torture, rape, sterilisation and electric shocks in state and church care. Tangaloa was one of the people to testify. I didn't remember my abuse until I was an adult and started getting flashbacks. Um, and that was very traumatic, like experiencing that trauma. So I had to work through that. The commission comes around and then I decide, well, this is what I need. I need to tell my story. I need them to know what my story was. So that's how I got involved. Um, it was challenging being involved with the commission because having to tell the detail of your abuse is just re-traumatising for any survivor. But I knew I needed to tell my story. The report, sitting at over 3,000 pages, marks one of the longest and most extensive in the country's history. It was tabled on Wednesday in Parliament, while survivors and supporters filled the gallery. It contained 138 recommendations, including a transformation of the care system, as well as calls for public apologies from the heads of the Anglican and Catholic churches and the government. New Zealand's Prime Minister, Christopher Luxon. A terrible injustice was done in the name of state care and it is now the responsibility of the state to make redress and this government will ensure that it happens. As difficult as it is, I hope that all New Zealanders take the time to read this report, to understand the abuse that you, the survivors, suffered and the lifelong impact it had on your lives. The report found those from the indigenous Maori community were especially vulnerable to abuse, as well as those with mental or physical disabilities. For Tony Jarvis, it represented acknowledgement. For decades they told us we, we made it up. They wouldn't have a bar of us. So this today is historic and that's acknowledgement. It acknowledges all these people here, all the courageous survivors that have been uh, courageous and strong enough to share their stories and come on board. You know, this is their story. It's not just mine and Cassidy to stand here speaking to, it's their story, all these people around here, the ones that are home, our passed away one, family and whanau that are not here.